Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. Praise God. Hallelujah. Pleasant good morning to each and everyone. It's a joy and privilege to be in God's house one more time to worship and to praise Him and to lift you up and to magnify the name that is above all Him this morning. Say welcome. Welcome to all our online viewers this morning. Hallelujah. Come on. Give God a high note of praise this morning. Come on. Right when you're in your home this morning. Come on. Shout some praise unto our good God this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah this morning. We have a church this morning. Come on. Invite a neighbor. Invite a friend this morning. Come on. Share that link this morning. Hallelujah this morning. Come on. Right where you're in your homes. Come on. Just begin to worship our good God this morning. Hallelujah. He's worthy of our praise this morning. Hallelujah. I'm alive. You are alive this morning hallelujah thank you jesus oh we bless you on him come on worship him this morning hallelujah he's worthy of my praise he's worthy of your praise this morning let the redeem worship the king of king and the lord of lord now hallelujah come on praise him praise him with me this morning hallelujah come on raise your hands this morning come on shout hallelujah if you can shout it this morning hallelujah jesus jesus don't be afraid to shout that name don't be afraid to call that name this morning his name is Jesus the morning, the one true and living God this morning, hallelujah we worship you today Father God oh we bless your name this morning wonderful Savior, beautiful friend, Master, I can go on and on this morning, you are worthy you are worthy of our praise this morning Father God I say thank you, thank you thank you for that opportunity to bless and to magnify your name this morning, thank you for life, thank you for dying upon the cross for me, thank you for dying for all of us this morning God, thank you for your love and your mercy this morning Jesus so many things to thank you for this morning God so many things to thank you for this morning God Father God we bless your name take joy my king in what you will hear today in the service this morning God as you offer a sacrifice of praise unto you and you alone this morning Father God I say take complete control of this service this morning God take complete control this service belongs to you and only you today this morning God we come against every angels every obstacle everything that is not of the in the mighty name of Jesus this morning. We pull on every strong on this morning, God. We bind the words of the enemy this morning. This service goes out to you this morning, God. Oh God, to reach it to those who need to be rich this morning, my God. Loving Father and King, I give you thanks and I give you praise and I give you honor and I give you glory this morning, God. Lord, bless us all this morning, God, as we worship and honor you this morning, God, because you are great, because you are worthy of our praise this morning, God. How great is our God this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's lift your voices as we get ready to worship and sing and magnify the name this morning. How great is my God this morning. How great is your God this morning. I want you to sing with me. Sing it with me. Not because I say to sing it, but sing with us this morning. Come on, let's make a boast in our God this morning. He's great. He's great. I'm great to be praised this morning. Hallelujah this morning. Oh, Jesus. How great is our God now? Hallelujah this morning, Jesus. How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? And oh, we see how great, how great is our God. Come on, let's sing it again. How great is our God again? Come on, everybody now, sing it me now. How great is our God? Come on now, sing with me. How great is our God? And oh, we see how great, how great is our God. Splendor now, come on, help 
happy now. The splendor of a king. Clothed now, come on. Clothed in majesty. Let all in earth. Let all in earth rejoice. Let all in earth rejoice. He wraps himself now. He wraps himself in now. As darkness tries to hide now. Come on, give a great God some praise this morning. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, that's right. Clap the feet, clap this morning, and worship our great and mighty God who's worthy to be praised. The song says, He's the name that is above all names this morning, and I know that He's worthy to be praised. He's high and lifted up, and His name is Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless your name this morning, Jesus. You are my strength. He's your strength this morning. Hallelujah this morning. Oh, Jesus. You are my strength this morning. Hallelujah this morning, Jesus. Oh, we bless your holy name this morning. We worship you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless your name. Hallelujah this morning. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches now, reaches to me. Come on now, you are my strength. Yes, you are my strength. Oh yes, you are today. Strength like. 
you are my God and that you are my strength and you always be my strength you'll always be your strength today hallelujah Jesus I bless your holy name thank you Lord thank you Jesus thank you Lord thank you Lord still hallelujah this morning Jesus hallelujah this morning Jesus oh we bless your holy name this morning oh I worship you this morning Hallelujah this morning, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When the oceans rise, turn this war. My God, He will continue to be our strength this morning. Hallelujah this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on. So we are home this morning. And you're watching. Come on. Let's lift your hands this morning. Come on, lift those hands this morning. Come on, I see those hands lifted up. Yes. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands as high as you could as we sing this song this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hide me now. Tell him now. 
need to be touched this morning, Father God. Oh God, let me know I'm single this morning, God. We pull along and we bind every strong man right now in the name of Jesus. Your word will reach out this morning, God, Father God. Continue to pour into your humble servant this morning, God. Lord, you give her the right words to say this morning, God. She will preach her fear of favor this morning, my God. And my King this morning, God. We give you thanks and we give you praise and we give you honor to the mighty and loving God. Come on, give God some praise this morning. Let's welcome none other this morning and our host pastor of this tabernacle of prayer church this morning. None other than our pastor this morning. She loved you this morning. Pastor Raj Putinagasa this morning as she comes to bring forth the word of God this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 The songwriter says, Hallelujah. When oceans roar, Hallelujah. And thunders roar, he will above the clouds and the Lord promised hallelujah he is going to be with us in the storm this morning hallelujah father we praise and we bless you this morning we thank you oh God that you're with us we thank you for your sweet Holy Spirit oh God we thank you that you're with us oh God even now and we pray today Holy Spirit oh God as your as your word go forth through the airwaves we pray this morning there'll be an anointing we pray that the power of the Holy Ghost are going to reach out, oh God, to those in their homes, wherever they may be right now, Father, in their cars, in the hospitals, at their workplace. Holy Spirit, oh God, you move in the airwaves and minister, oh God. Let your word come this morning, Jesus, with power and with the anointing, oh God, ministering to every heart and every life this morning. Father, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Thank you, worship team. Hallelujah. Praise God. We thank God for the worship this morning, and we thank God for blessing and ministering to every one of them this morning. Hallelujah. A blessed good morning. Hallelujah. And I greet you. In the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our soon and our coming King. I take this opportunity this morning to say welcome, welcome, welcome to all our online viewers. Thank you so much, you know, for tuning in and for allowing us in your space this morning. Hallelujah. It is truly an honor and it's truly a privilege this morning to bring the word of God to you. And I pray it will be a blessing to you and to members of your family as you continue to look on this morning. I want to go right into the Word of God. I want to speak to you on the topic, stay on course despite the storm. Stay on course despite the storm. I'm reading this morning from the book of Acts chapter 27. Hallelujah. I would love to read the entire chapter, but time will not permit me this morning. So I will be extracting different verses from the said chapter. And I want you, those who are looking on, take the time. Take the time and read chapter 27 in the book of Acts and chapter 28. It's in its entirety this morning. Amen? Hallelujah. I just want to give you a background of what was happening at the time. The Apostle Paul was in Jerusalem under arrest. And by this time, he had already completed most of his missionary journey. He was now waiting to be tried. But the Apostle Paul had a burning desire. He had a longing to go to Rome. His heart was set to go to Rome. His heart was set to go, hallelujah, to Rome because he was from Rome. And his main goal is that, you know, he wanted to go there to preach the gospel to the Romans. Hallelujah. And God had told him in the previous chapter, you would see that, that he will go to Rome. 
So that made Paul confident. It made him confident that he was in the will of God. And God was fulfilling and completing God's purpose for his life. And so it was agreed upon by King Agrippa that Paul will be sent to Rome for trial. In chapter 27, we see Paul was sent, he was placed in a cargo ship as a prisoner, along with other prisoners. The ship consisted of merchandise and cargo that they were going over to Rome, you know, to sell. It consisted of prisoners. It consisted of crew members and sailors, totaling 276 people on board that ship. Hallelujah. Also accompanying Paul was Luke, hallelujah, the doctor. And of course, he was the one writing this account. And also, there was also another disciple from Macedonia called Narissacha. Both of them choose to take the time to travel with Paul to Rome. The trip started smooth sailing, but later developed into a great storm. I want you to get this this morning. So they started off in Jerusalem which is here, with the intention to go to Rome over there. Hallelujah. But somewhere along the line, hallelujah, on the journey, a storm developed suddenly. Something that they did not cater for. Something, you know, you know they, they, they couldn't. They couldn't understand, but, you know, they didn't cater for that. They didn't foresee it happening. They didn't, you know, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't know what to expect. But I can tell you this morning that storms are a part of life's journey. Storms come in all forms and in all fashions. Hallelujah. Some of us, hallelujah, right now, you might be experiencing um, a storm in your life. You might be experiencing a marital storm. Hallelujah. Some are going through financial storms. Some are going through, you know, storms in your business. Some are going through storms in your homes, storms in your family with your children, storms with your neighbors, storms with your health. We are not exempted from the storms of life. Jesus never promised a storm-free life. But he promised that he will be with us in the storm. Isaiah says, when you pass through the water, when you pass through the water, not if, when. When you pass through the water, I will be with thee. And when you pass through the river, they will not overflow thee. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. He said, I will be with you. I will be with you in the fire. I will be with you in the flood. And he promised to be with us in our storms. You know, you could say well, the Lord could have stopped the storms. Look at the three Hebrew boys. The fire was hot seven times hotter. And you know what? You know, why didn't God, you know, deliver them from, the, from, from it? Stop it from, from them going into the fire. Hallelujah. But the scripture says they were thrown into the fire. And one of the gods said, didn't we throw three? But I'm seeing four people in the fire. And the fourth one looked like the son of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He promised to be with you in the fire and in the, in the, in the storms this morning. Hallelujah. We look at Daniel. Hallelujah. Daniel could have been stopped from being, you know, thrown into the lion's den. But he wasn't. God was with him in the lion's den. So this morning, whatever storm you might be facing, 
Hallelujah. God promised that he will be with you. He said, I will never leave your side. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you even unto the end of the earth. But sometimes we feel forsaken. But I want you to know that God is with you. Can I tell you this morning in life, storms will come to interrupt our plans. When 2020 began, many of us would have made plans. People would have set goals for 2020. Some would have made plans to start a, a job right here locally. Some had a big contract, you know, to start a big job internationally. Some would have made plans to get married and start a family. Students would have made plans, you know, to continue their studies. Families would have made plans to go on a long-awaited vacation. People made plans, you know, to open up a business. Hallelujah. Pastors would have made plans, you know, to, to, to build a house of God. Some would have made plans to go on a missionary trip. We all had plans. But COVID-19 came as a storm and interrupted everybody's plan and knocked everybody off course. Can I tell you this morning that sometimes... God will cause the storm to be interrupted. God will cause the storm to interrupt your plan and to knock us off course and place us in his course. Let me say that again. Sometimes God will cause the storm to interrupt your plan, to knock you, knock, knock you off course and to place you in his course. So Paul and the others on their journey to Rome encountered a storm. This was no ordinary storm. The Luke, you know, Luke wrote and he described the storm in detail. The account says, hallelujah, tells us that it was a dangerous one. It was a violent storm, hallelujah. And we could very well imagine the raging wind and, you know, the rain and the waves rising up almost, covering the ship, tossing violently, hallelujah, the ship back and forth in the, water, in, 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 in the sea and filling it up with water, hallelujah. And this continued and it grew worse. The storm intensified as the days went by. The wind became more violent. The waves became more aggressive. And for 14 days, the scripture says, the storm raged night and day, nonstop. The scripture says there were no sign of sun, no stars for 14 days. And as a result, hallelujah, it was dark. You couldn't tell the time. You couldn't tell which direction because they depended on the sun for direction. That's where they were heading. Hallelujah. So I want to pick up from chapter 27, verse 14, and then we will skip to 18, 19, and 20. Hallelujah. I'm reading from the Amplified. Hallelujah. And it says, but soon afterward, hallelujah, a violent wind caused, called Equilo, a northeaster, a tempestuous windstorm like a typhoon, came rushing down from the island. And when the ship was caught in it and could not head against the wind to gain stability, we gave up. And letting her drift, they were driven along. On the next day, we were being violently tossed about by the storm and taken on water. They began to jettison the cargo. And, uh, hallelujah, jettison the cargo. And on the third day, they threw the ship's tackle, the spare lines, the blocks, the miscellaneous equipment overboard. And their own, with their own hands to further reduce the weight. Since neither sun nor stars appear for many days. 
and no small storm kept raging about us. From then on, all hope of being saved was abandoned. I'm going to read that again. From then on, all hope of being saved was abandoned. All hope from being saved was lost. The storm was so intense, they lost hope. And I could very well imagine that most of these 276 people on board were experienced crew members. They, they would have been acquainted with the bad weather at sea. But it was so bad, they lost hope of being saved. How many of you this morning, the storm you are facing is so bad? You're on the verge of losing hope. You know, I heard of a family who lost both parents, father and mother, to COVID. The children were under the ages of 11, left alone in this storm, raging around them, fearing what the future holds. That is a storm that can cause you to lose hope. Some of you, you're losing hope because the bank is about to foreclose. Hallelujah, your home, you can't meet the mortgage. Some of you are losing hope because your company is about to go under. It cannot be financially maintained. You're losing hope because the doctor's report said of a, you know, report of a terminal illness. You're losing hope because your marriage is about to end in divorce. Yes, I'm speaking to some of you out there. You're losing hope. Pastors, you are losing hope. Hallelujah. And you're packing up and leaving the ministry. Hallelujah. We are living in a time when the storms of life is raging and you have reached the stage of losing hope. For Paul and the others on the ship, there were no sign of hope. It has been dark for them. No sun, no stars for 14 days. Sometimes we feel that way, hallelujah. And I know some of you looking on must be saying, Sister Raj, I know, I know it's been dark for me. I feel the same way. I feel I have no direction, hallelujah. I'm being tossed to and fro and I feel lost, hallelujah. And you're about to throw in the towel, Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you this morning, today, hallelujah, hold on, hold on, hold on. There is hope in God. The scripture tells us that God is our refuge. He is our strength. He is the very present help in trouble. Second Corinthians says, we are hard pressed on every side, but we are not crushed. Hallelujah. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. Hallelujah. We are struck down, but we are not destroyed. Hallelujah. You are stronger than you think. You will survive this storm. Hallelujah. Romans says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, hallelujah, or distress, or persecution, or famine, hallelujah, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. I want you to listen to what Paul says in the midst of the storm. Hallelujah, verse 21 to 25. Listen to what Paul says in the midst of the storm and in the midst of losing hope. He says, and they had gone a long time, after they had gone a long time without food, because of seasickness and stress, Paul stood up before them and he said, men, you should have followed my advice and should have not set sail from Crete and brought, to brought on this damage and loss. But even now, 
But even now, everybody, I want you to say, but even now, but even now, I urge you, keep up your courage and be in good spirits. Keep up your courage and be in good spirits because there will be no loss of life among you, but only loss of the ship. For this very night, an angel of the Lord, to whom I belong and whom I serve, stood before me and said, Stop being afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. And behold, God has given you the lives of all these sailing with you. So keep up. Your courage, men, for I believe God and I have complete confidence in him that it will turn out exactly as I have been told. In the midst of the storm that we all might be facing, God is looking for men and for women who might be in the storm and like Paul to stand up and to recognize that the God that we serve is bigger than the storm that you face this morning. God is looking for men and women to raise their voices in the midst of the storm. God is saying, you know, I'm looking for people who will be an encourager. Hallelujah. Looking for people to raise their voices and say, take courage, take courage, take courage. God is looking for the church, for churches. It's no time, hallelujah, to be muzzled and to be silent. God is looking for vessels that will stand up in the midst of the storm, hallelujah, to declare the goodness of our God to the people who are losing hope around you. God is looking for you to declare hope for the people in your community, in our nation. For too long, we are blending in with the crowd. It's time to stand out and declare the goodness of our God this morning. When all the people have lost hope, Paul stood up and he said, take courage. Be of a good spirit. Paul continued to declare his faith and he said for this very night, hallelujah, an angel of the God whom I serve and whom, hallelujah, whom I, I, I serve stood before me and the God whom I belong, the God whom I belong to and the God whom I serve, hallelujah. Stop being afraid, Paul. Stop being afraid, Pastor Andy. Stop being afraid, Minister Kevin, hallelujah. You must stand before Caesar. Behold, God has given you the lives of, the sa of these sailing with you. Keep up your courage, man. For I believe God and I have complete confidence in him that it will turn out exactly as I have been told. Wow. Paul declared his faith in the midst of the raging storm. He's saying all this, and by the time all this is happening, storm is getting worse, and it's getting worse, and it's raging even more. It has been intensified and raging even more. Hallelujah. In the midst of the 276 people who lost hope of being saved, and he said, take courage and be of a good spirit. The God whom I serve and the God whom I belong to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can say that this morning. The God whom I serve and the God whom I belong to. Paul did not blend with the crowd. Hallelujah. To lose his hope. Hallelujah. I want you to know since COVID-19, many believers have lost hope. Many believers are enjoying being away from church. Hallelujah. And you know, from the fellowship. Hallelujah. I want to ask the question, when is the last time you shared a message of hope to someone? Hallelujah. In your workplace, in your community. Hallelujah. Even in your home this morning. 
Hallelujah. Many people are facing storms and they are waiting for somebody, hallelujah, to give them a word of hope. Hallelujah. Somebody is waiting on you. Hallelujah. Verse 24 says, Paul told, you know, God told Paul, you must stand before Caesar. Hallelujah. So they started in Jerusalem on the journey to fulfill the purpose in Rome. Hallelujah. You find yourself in a storm, hallelujah, in the middle of the journey. The winds may toss you to and fro, and you know, it's dark and you feel you lost direction. And God was saying to Paul, don't forget, you've got to stand before Caesar. They're in the storm here. But God is telling him, don't forget, you have to stand before Caesar in Rome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God is saying to some of you this morning, hallelujah, you're looking at me right now, and God is saying, hallelujah. He may have called you many years with purpose. Many of you since COVID, you have lost your purpose. You get caught up in the storms and you know your course and your direction change and you lose focus and you forget your purpose. I'm saying to you this morning, time is running out. Remember when God called you and outlined to you, you know, his plan for your life and for your purpose. I'm appealing to all of you looking at me right now. If you have gone off course, get back on course and fulfill God's purpose for your life. Verse 25 says, keep courage, men, for I believe God and I have complete confidence in him. What reassuring words to hear in the midst of the storm. What reassuring words of comfort that we can hear in the midst of the storm. Keep courage, men. I believe, hallelujah, God, and I have complete confidence in the, in the God whom I serve. It will turn out just as I have told you. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. Praise. Give God a clap hand of praise right where you are in your home. Clap your hand. We serve a mighty God. We are rooted. We are grounded. We know our God. Paul knew his God, the God whom I serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have complete confidence in my God. Can you say that this morning? Let's go to verse 29 to 31. Then fearing that we might run aground somewhere on the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern to slow the ship and keep wishing for daybreak to come. And as the sailors were trying to escape secretly from the ship and had let down and skiff into the sea, pretending that they were going to lay out anchors from the bow. And Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, unless these men remain on the ship, you cannot be saved. They dropped four anchors. Hallelujah. What I'm, what, this is a message for another time. Hallelujah. But I will go through it very quickly. Thank God that in the midst of the storm, we have an anchor whose name is Jesus. The purpose of an anchor is to steady the ship and to keep it from drifting. Hallelujah. So they would have dropped the anchors, hallelujah, and the anchor would have, you know, gripped the rock to, and, you know, and, and keep it steady. And this rock is also Jesus. This morning we thank God that we have an anchor in life storms. 
Scripture says, hallelujah, they drop four anchors. Can I tell you that in your storm, hallelujah, firstly, you need an anchor in the word of God. If you're going through a storm, you need to anchor in the word of God. You need to know his promises. Secondly, you need to anchor in your faith. You need to know, hallelujah, know that your safety is not in no other, is not in the captain, is not in a man, is not in the government, it's not with your father, it's not with nobody, but your safety, hallelujah, is in Jesus. It's not in the boat, it is in Jesus. Thirdly, in the midst of the storm, you need an anchor in your relationship with God. You need to hear his voice like Paul and converse, hallelujah, with him. You need to have a sound relationship with God. And fourthly, hallelujah, in the midst of the storm, you need to anchor in the fellowship of one another. Hallelujah. You need people. In your storm, you need people. In your storm, you need somebody who will pray you through your storm. Hallelujah. Let's look at verse 30. And it says, but as the sailors were trying to escape secretly from the ship, what the sailors were trying to do in the midst of the storm, they were trying to jump ship and escape. But Paul said, unless you remain on the ship, you will not be saved. Many of you looking at me this morning, you're thinking about jumping ship. Let me tell you, stay in the ship. Don't go overboard. Don't desert your family. Don't abandon your calling. Don't desert your marriage. Hallelujah. Don't abandon your family. Don't jump ship from church to church. It will be worse for you. Stay in the ship. Hallelujah. Don't jump ship. Stay in the ship. I don't care how, you know, how stormy it may get with you. I don't care how dark it may seem. I don't care how lost you may feel. I want you to know God is saying, hold on. God is saying, hold on. Put your trust in me. Hallelujah. Verse 33 to 36. And while they waited... On the day to dawn, Paul encouraged them all, told them to have some food. He said, this is the 14th day and you have been constantly on watch and going through without food, having eaten nothing. So I urge you to eat some food for this is your survival. For not a hair from the head of any of you will perish. And having said this, the scripture says he took bread and he gave thanks to God in front of them all and he broke it and began to eat. Hallelujah. Then all of them were encouraged and their spirits were improved and they ate when they ate some food. Hallelujah. 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 In the midst of the raging storm, Paul encouraged them to eat some bread. In the midst of the all 276 people, hallelujah, in the midst of them all, Paul took bread. He gave thanks in front of them all. He broke it and he gave them to eat and they began to eat. And he said to them, take, you need this for survival. You need this for your survival. I want you to know in the midst of your storm, we need the bread of life for our survival. We need the living bread which came down from heaven whose name is Jesus for our survival. We need Jesus for our survival. Hallelujah. You can't make it without Jesus this morning. And the scripture says in verse 36, then all of them were encouraged and their spirits improved. Another version says they became cheerful. Hallelujah. And they were encouraged. Hallelujah. I want you to keep in mind the storm was still raging and they were cheerful. The storm was still raging, 
but they were cheerful. I tell you, God can put a smile on your face despite the storm. One songwriter says, with Christ in my vessel, I can smile at the storm. Hallelujah. Let's continue reading verse 39 to 41. When they came, they did not recognize the land. But they noticed a bay with a beach. And they decided to run the ship ashore there if they could. So they cut the cables and, and severed the anchor and let them in the sea while at the same time unlashing, unlashing the ropes of the rudder and after hoisting the forestall to the wind, they headed steadily for the beach. But striking a reef with waves breaking in on either side, they ran the ship aground. The pro, the forward point, struck fast and remained immovable while the stern began to break up upon under the heavy force, violent force of the waves. And verse 44 says, And he commanded the rest to follow. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to keep in mind the storm was still raging. Hallelujah. He commanded the rest to follow. Some on floating planks and others on various forms of the ship. And so it was that they all of them were brought safely to land. The storm was still raging. And the scripture says they spotted a beach and they decided to run the ship ashore. But the ship struck a reef and you know what? The, the, the violent waves were smashing in. And the scripture says the stern was broken and the entire ship was wrecked. Those who could have swam, swim, they swam across. And the scripture says, you know, the others held on to broken pieces of the ship. The scripture says they survived. Every one of them arrived safely on land. Can I tell you this morning that your storm might be so severe. It might be so intense. That you were left with just some broken pieces. All that you had to hold on to in your storm were just some broken pieces. I'm here to tell you this morning, don't let go of the broken pieces. Because it is those broken pieces that will bring you to shore. Don't let go of the broken pieces. Because it is those broken pieces that will take you to the next chapter. It is a, that, that, that will take you to the next chapter, which is chapter 28. Don't let go of the broken pieces. Because those broken pieces will bring you to the next level. It will bring you to the next level. It will bring you to the next level in your life this morning. Don't, you know, let go of those broken pieces because, hallelujah, God wanted, because you will, you know, because you will stay on course that God wanted you to be all along. It is those broken pieces that will become part of God's purpose for your life. This morning, a lot was said. I'm bringing this message to a close. But I want to point out to you this morning, the journey started in Jerusalem. It was in the plan of God for them to go to Rome. They were on their way to fulfill purpose. But somewhere in the journey, they encountered a terrible storm that knocked them off course. They ended up in an island called Malta. An island that they never heard of in their life. An island they never knew. An island that was so small that, and, and so insignificant. They ended up in this island that they, they would have never come by choice. Are you getting the picture this morning? 
When they went to the island, they were greeted kindly. Hallelujah. And the scripture says what happened in that island, hallelujah, was directed by God. And as, as you may have read in 28, chapter 28, Paul was picking up sticks and, you know, to make a fire because they were drenched with water for so long out in the sea. And as he was doing that, he was bitten by a venomous viper. And the scripture says the natives were looking, hallelujah, to see if he would die, turn blue and die. But Paul shake it off and continued as normal. After meeting the people, I want to tell you what happened. The chief of the island, his father was sick and Paul prayed and the man was healed. The entire island came together and they brought their sick and their afflicted and Paul prayed and healed and delivered them all. Revival came to the people on that island because God changed their course. Don't get hungry when God change, changes your course. Can I tell you sometimes God has to knock us off course so that we can get on his course. On the road to fulfilling purpose. God doesn't tell us always, hallelujah. He doesn't tell us of the detours that we have to take. And I know Pastor Andy, you know, he said it right a couple of weeks ago when he said God doesn't tell us what happens between when we are called and fulfilling purpose. God doesn't tell us and show us the entire nine yards. Hallelujah. If he had told the children of Israel that they were, they were going to cross the Red Sea, you think they would have gone? If he had told the Israelites that they have, you know, giants to fight before they enter the promised land, would they have gone? If he would have told Paul and the others, you know, they would have this dangerous storm to face, would they have gone? God had to knock them out, of course, to bring them to a place called Malta. Where the gospel had to be preached. There was salvation, there was healing, there was deliverance on the island, and there was a revival in the island. Paul did not have a clue that this was part of the plan of God until it happened. Paul and the 276 people stayed on the island for three months, and they were treated well. And on their departure, they were given a ship with all that was needed for their trip to Rome. And they parted to finish the course to Rome. In closing, many of you looking at me right now, you have been knocked off on course in 2020. COVID-19 came and threw you off course. It disrupted, you, you know, it disrupted your life. And you're angry. You're angry with God because of the place that you're in. You're saying, God, why? You're asking God all the questions that you could ask. You feel that you are in this dark place. You feel that you are in this stormy place. There is no light, no sun, no stars. You feel like you're losing a sense of direction for your life. You're saying, Pastor Raj, I didn't plan for this. I don't understand it. I don't understand what God is doing. I don't know if God is ever in this you're saying, God, what's happening? My life is taking another direction. God, what's happening? I'm going off course from your purpose. I want to say to you, like Paul, take courage. Take courage. God is saying to you, hold on. 
Drop some of the anchor. It's time to drop an anchor. God is saying to many of you looking at me this morning, hallelujah. I'm taking you off course for purpose. In this time of pandemic, hallelujah, the season has changed. The end is near. And as a result, there will be some detours that, you know, that we will have to take. We, there, there will be some off courses that we will have to take, hallelujah. There will be some shifting that is going to take place around us, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because the season has changed. And although you don't understand it, you may say, I don't understand it, hallelujah. You might be off course. I want you to know it's just temporary. It is just temporary. It's part of your purpose. There are some of you, since 2020 started, you were knocked off course. It threw you into a place of complacency, a place of dormancy. You're dormant. place of you know being lazy a place where you have grown cold in the faith a place where you have reached into a backslidden state God is saying to you today you need to get back on track with God church has closed and so many of us we are on vacation but thank God it's reopening on Sunday you need to return to the fold there is no time again people you don't want to be left behind when the rapture take place because his coming is soon he is soon to come there is work to be done night is coming when no man can work pastor I'm talking to you now is not the time to quit ministry. Now is the time to strategize. Now is the time to implement ways of fulfilling that great commission. Hallelujah. Dear pastors, great men of God, you may have resigned because of age, because of illness or whatever. I want you to know there are other avenues. There are, there are social media that can reach the world. Come on, rise up. Let the message of salvation go out in all the social media. Come on, minister a word and send it out. God has not finished with you as yet. Let's get on course. Despite the storm. Let's get on course. Despite the storm. Hallelujah. This morning, as we close, I want to pray. I want us to bow our hearts in prayer. Those of you looking, those of you sitting in the auditorium, come and pray. Those of you sitting, you know, behind your steering wheel at your home on your job, wherever you might be. Hallelujah. Bow your heart and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word and I thank you, God, it was executed as you commanded. I pray today as your word go forth to all our viewing audience. Hallelujah. Father, I bring those who might be in the storm, those who might be facing a storm in their life right now. Father, they might be going through some storm or the other. Oh God, they may be facing a marriage storm, a financial storm. God, some might be facing a spiritual storm. Father, some might be facing, oh God, some storm with health issues. Hallelujah. Father, whatever storm that they are facing right now, 
right now. I pray, Father, that you're going to reach out your hand, oh God, and touch them, Lord. Hallelujah. Some have been knocked off course. Hallelujah. Some, the waves have been battering them to and fro. Hallelujah. And they feel like they have lost hope. Oh God, Father, I pray this morning. Oh God, so many of them feel like giving up. Oh God, I pray today, reach out your hand. Reach out your hand of comfort. Oh God, those who might be depressed, I pray, Holy Spirit, touch their minds. I pray, God, you will encourage those, oh God, who need to be encouraged. Bring peace, oh God, to every troubled mind right now. Bring peace to every storm right now. Father, oh God, give them strength. Give them strength, oh God, to overcome every wind, oh God. Give them stability, oh God. Their food, their feet will be, oh God, rooted and grounded in you, oh God. That despite the storm might be raging, God, they will stand on you today, Father. Oh God. There are some, oh God, who might be viewing. They're serving you, Jesus. And they have been knocked off course and they have lost a sense of direction, oh God. They're confused of what's happening around them, Father. I pray, God, I pray you're going to reach out to them in that place where they have been detoured, in that place where they have gone off course. I'm saying, Father God, reach out to them. Let them reach to that place or in their minds of their purpose. And Father, let them become, oh God, heading back to their purpose right now. Give them courage. Courage, oh God. As you did Paul and the others on the ship. Give them courage this morning. Give them a spirit, oh God. Oh God, a warrior spirit where they're going to stand up despite the storm. And they're going to fight, oh God, everything that is coming up against them. Knowing, God, that you are their strength and you are their refuge and you are their hiding place. And Father, I pray today, you will give them courage, oh God. Father, to those who have been backslidden, God. Oh God, I pray this morning, draw them back to the fold. You are married to the backslider, God. You care and you love them. And God, I pray for somehow in these last and closing days, God, draw them back. Draw them back. Draw them back, Jesus. Back to yourself today, oh God. Draw them. Give them that spirit of urgency because it is urgent that they get back on track. Father, there are some who want to escape from everything. There are some who saying, God, you know, I've given up. I feel like giving up. Hallelujah. They want to jump ship. They want to go overboard. They want to abandon life. Hallelujah. Because they're saying, I can't take the pressure. I can't take the pressure. I can't undergo no more storms. I'm saying, God, you know their hearts. You know their feeling. And I'm saying, Father, reach out to them even now. Give them, oh God, an encouraging spirit. Give them a word. Give them a word, God, they would hold on to. They would hang on in these closing times. Strength to remain. Strength to chart the course. Strength to fulfill their purpose, oh God. Hallelujah. Father, reach out to every viewing audience. I pray, Father, that this word will go forth with power, with might. Oh God, I know even now that you're doing something mighty in every home, in every family. Father, you're doing a work right now. God, you're working a work right now in every home, in every family right now. Continue, God, to touch the hearts 
hearts of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. We don't want to close this broadcast without giving you the opportunity of making Jesus the Lord of your life. If you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, hallelujah, I want you to do that today. Don't put it off for tomorrow. Tomorrow will be too late. Ask him. Let me tell you, Jesus wants to come into your heart. But he wants you to ask him. He won't come in uninvited. He wants you to say, Lord, come into my heart. So tonight, this morning, sorry, if you have not received Jesus, I want you to repeat this prayer as you invite Jesus into your heart. Say after me, Father, I am a sinner and I need a Savior. Forgive me for all my sins. Father, there are many. Come into my heart. Cleanse me. Wash me as I make you Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. If you said that simple prayer, I want you to know heaven is rejoicing because you have now become a family, you know, a family of God. You have not joined the family of God. I want you to know, give us, you know, send us a line, send us a comment, whatever it is that you want us, let us know that you have accepted Jesus and let us know that this broadcast has been a blessing to you. Hallelujah. We'll be more than happy to answer you. We'll be more than happy, you know, to reply to your comments. We'll be more than happy to pray for you. So, to, to, so this morning, I want you to know, you know, God bless you. I want you to stay blessed. I want you to keep good and stay, stay on course despite the storm. Stay on course despite the storm. God bless you. See you next week, same time at 9 a.m. We will be also right here in the auditorium. We're having our services. Hallelujah. And join us if you can at number 10, Cunningham Street, St. Madeline. God bless you. We love you with the love of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah.